Hello everybody, I'm Billabob from BVR, and today I'm going to be doing a super quick zero gravity tutorial, because ever since my last video I've seen a ton of people asking, like, how do you make objects zero gravity? So today I'm going to be going over how to make players zero gravity and how to make objects zero gravity. This is going to be using Circuits V2, so it's going to help if you have knowledge of Circuits V2 and how to use it, but technically if you want, I guess you can probably just copy exactly what I do in this video and get the same result, so. Alright, first let's get into some really basic setup stuff, because I want this to be accessible to anyone, no matter how little they know. So the first thing you want to do is make a room. If you haven't already, go to create, go to base rooms, and then go to make a room. It'll prompt you to enter a name, do that, and then it'll take you to your brand new room. Then you need to pull out your maker pen, go to your watch, go to backpack, and then favorite your maker pen, and then when you grab behind your back, you'll pull it out. Then we need to set up our room. You can go to this room, go to settings, go to roles, go to everyone, grab your maker pen, and then turn on can fly. And that way, you will be able to fly around, and this will just make it easier to do stuff. You fly by holding out your hand like this, and then just holding down the jump button, and then you can just move around like that, and then you stop flying by pressing the jump button on your other controller. And then our last setup thing is turning on Circuits V2, so again, go to this room, go to Settings, go to General Setup, go to the second page, check this box, hit Apply, hit OK, and then it should reset here, and you'll be back in. Then, if you grab your Maker Pen and open the palette, there should be a Circuits V2 tab right here, and then we're all good to go. Okay, first I'm going to be showing you how to do player zero gravity, because that's a lot easier than object zero gravity. So first, we're going to want a button to turn on and off our zero gravity. So go to props, go to the last page, and then you can spawn in a toggle button V2. And then go to your Circuits V2 tab, and then go all the way to the back. We're just going to pull out all the things we need right now. You're going to need a vector create. You're going to need an... If you're going to need an event receiver. And lastly, the most important one, the add impulse. And this is all the chips you need. Go to configure and then configure this event receiver to be a update 30 hertz. I just remembered that we are also going to need a multiply chip. There we go. So this update 30 hertz runs 30 times a second. So we're going to wire this into the if. And that's just going to be checking if this toggle button is pressed or not. If it is, then we want to go into this add impulse chip. For the object tab on this add impulse, we're going to put it into player. This is going to be the last player that pressed the toggle button. And then we need the speed value. And this is going to be the delta time from the event receiver times. That's why we need this multiply chip. And we're going to put in... 9.81 right there you need that specific number and then you can put that product into the speed value and then for the direction we're just going to make a vector here where everything is zeroed besides the y is at one and we can put that into the direction max speed doesn't really matter i'm going to set it to nine and then if we press this button you can see i'm now floating and I can go around, and I can throw myself like that, and this is why I have fly turned on, in case I accidentally go above the ceiling and fly off. So as you can see here, I've got zero gravity. I'm not like, well, I am falling because I threw myself down, but if I throw myself up here, I'll keep going up until I hit the ceiling. I'll just be able to fling myself around on this wall. And that is how you do player zero gravity. If you fly, it overrides this, so you can just fly back to your button and turn that off. And now we can set up the object zero gravity. I guess first we should probably get out the object we want to make zero G. I'm going to go with this basketball. You can use pretty much anything. Want to go to configure here and get the tag of whatever you're doing. I'm going to get rid of basketball and just add like B1 or something because that's a lot shorter and easier to work with. Why is it not working? There we go. So basically with objects like this, there is no like object to get velocity. So we're going to need to calculate the velocity vector by ourselves. And we can do this using the ball's position from one frame to the next. So like, let's say the ball is here one frame and because it's moving this direction, it moves here this next frame. The difference between these positions is the velocity vector it moved in that one frame. And this velocity vector is what we need to get so that we can change it so that it's zero gravity. And lucky for us, even though there isn't a get velocity chip, there is a get position chip. We're also going to need a get element chip. It's on the same page, so I'm gonna put that out there. And we're going to need creation object to get all with tag. And then for the tag, we're gonna set whatever you had the tag as for the other thing. I don't know why my keyboard does this sometimes. I think it's a glitch. Anyways, I set it to B1. So, and then we need to wire this into the list of the get element. We can leave the index as zero. So the way I'm setting this up, it's only going to work on this first one. But if you do want to have it be more than one, then you can set up an event that loops through all the objects with a tab and does what we're about to do to make it zero gravity. But for now, I'm just going to leave this at index zero, and then we can get the position of that element. So as I said earlier, to calculate the velocity, we're going to need two different positions for the object, but this get position only gets it for the current frame. So what we're going to need is two sync vector threes, 
and one of these will be the position for the current frame, and one of them will be for the last frame. And what's going to happen is that every frame, it's going to overwrite the one from the last frame, which I'm going to make vector 3, 2, as vector 3, 1, which was the one from the current frame, last frame, and then we're going to overwrite this one with the one from the current frame, if that makes sense. So I'm going to rename this top one to current, because that's going to be the position on the current frame. And then I'm going to name this one last, because this will be the position on the last frame. And then we are going to need two set value chips here. And then I'm going to go ahead and borrow this update 30 hertz event receiver from the other circuit into this one, because I'm not using this one anymore. So the first thing we want to do is save this current vector in the last vector, because we're going to be overriding this current vector, and the whole point is that we save it in this one before we override it. So we're going to set the last variable to the current variable. And then after that, we're going to set the current variable to the actual current position from there. And then we're going to need two vector splits, and we're going to need a vector create later, so I'll just put that there. So we need to wire the current one into that one, and the last one into that one. And the reason that we're doing this is because we're going to need to subtract the vectors, as I said earlier, to get the velocity. So we need three subtracts here, because there's no vector subtract, we just need to individually subtract all of them. So for this current one, we're going to go x, y, z, and then x, y, Z right under that, just like that. And now that we have the difference of them, we can just wire them straight back into this vector create. And then boom, we've calculated the velocity. That's the hard part. The rest of it's pretty easy. We're going to need a set impulse chip here instead of a add impulse from the other one, make sure it's set. For the object, we just want it to be the get element we got over here, because this is the object we're doing all this stuff on. The speed, we don't really need to touch for now, and the direction is going to be this velocity vector that we just calculated. So then we can just hook all of this up into here, and Boom, we've got zero gravity, except we don't. Why isn't it working? Well, I knew it wasn't going to work. You can see here, it's falling here, and that's because, basically, you can see it moves a very little amount before it kind of just stops and starts falling, and that's because every 30 hertz this runs, or I mean, what every, like, frame, basically, I'm just going to say frame, or tick, I guess, every tick this runs, and it gets the difference between these values, and because this is running so fast, that value is so small, that because we're setting it to that, it runs out really quickly just because that that vector velocity is so small because we're getting it in such a small amount of time, if that makes sense. So what we need to do is modify this so that we multiply all of these values before we create them into a vector again to make them like a larger number so it actually has an effect. So we're going to need three multiply chips here, and we're going to need to wire these in here. And what we can do is individually set these values, but because we're going to be tweaking them uh, and they're all going to be the same, we just can put an add up here. And then law we'll put that into here. And then whatever we put into this top add value will be what it multiplies them by. So I'm just going to go with six for now. We're going to need to probably modify that value later. But for now, we can just wire in this vector create. And let's see, does this work? Okay, you can see it's, it's going a little bit further, but that's still not really enough. So let's try setting this to 10. And then we throw it, you can see it's still going a little bit further, but it still dies out relatively quickly, but we're almost there. Let's try 12 here, see if that works. All right, and then you can see that's, I mean, that's pretty good. You can see there, it goes for a while and then dies. I might crank it up to 13, because it's not going super far. Oh, but you see there, I set it to 13, and then I throw it not that far, and then it... Yeah, I kind of wanted to show that in case that happens to you. So you can see there I had it at 12, that was almost perfect. I cranked it up to 13 just to see, and then you throw it, and it just accelerates into the abyss. And, <laughs> I mean, it's coming back because I set it, uh, well, I didn't set it to respawn. It automatically does if it, like, goes far away enough, I'm pretty sure. But what you can do so that you don't lose your ball is set up an object respawner real quick. So you can go to Props, Dynamic, get a Normal button, not a Button V2. And then go to Gadgets, Other Gadgets, and the reason we're not getting a Button V2 is because there's currently no Object Respawner V2, and a V11 will work just fine. You want to wire this red output into the red input, and then set this tag to be whatever you had yours as, B1, and then if I click this, it, uh, just you just have to kind of spam it a bunch. And there you go. <laughs> so if your ball does go into the abyss, this will help you get it back. I'm pretty sure 12.1 is where we're going to want to land here. All right, let's try this. You can still, that's still way too far. We'll just go with 12. 12 is fine. It's not like it matters too much anyways, because you'll probably notice, hey, this isn't 0G. It just kind of hangs a little bit longer than usual. And that's because while we have kind of tamed the velocity, tamed is not the word I was looking for. We've got and modified the velocity, we haven't actually changed gravity at all, so it's still being pulled by gravity. And gravity is controlled by the y-axis. We need to get an add chip, we can just clone this one from over here because we already used it, and we're going to need to add to the y-value a certain amount 
to kind of counteract gravity. And this is a very small amount, and the thing is that this amount, I'm pretty sure, is actually going to vary whether you're on PC, Quest, or PSVR. So I'm pretty sure you're gonna have to just tweak it a little bit. I'm pretty sure for PC, 0.045 should work. Something for, like, Quest, I'm pretty sure it's, like, 0.06 something, but let's see if I'm even remembering this right. So I throw it. Yep, there you go. You can see it goes off into the distance. It's still falling very slightly, though, so we're going to need to counteract gravity a little bit more. You want to increase it by just a little bit, so I'm going to go 0.05. I feel like that'll still be too much. You can get our ball back and then throw it. You can see it's still slightly falling. Maybe it is 0.6. Maybe 0.45 is for quests. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it also does vary on what object you're using. I'm sure there's some way to, like, mathematically find this, but, you know, guess and check works too. All right, throw it there with 0.6. It's still falling very slightly. Okay, so I ended up around 0.09 just by incrementing it a little bit as I thought, and then you can see I throw it there, and it actually does start going up a little bit. So 0.09 is maybe like slightly higher. It's probably something like 0.87 or something. Okay, let's test 0.087 here, and then you can test it by just dropping it and seeing if it floats. You can see here it's going down very slightly, but if I hit it in another direction, there we go. We have achieved zero gravity. And again, I'm pretty sure those numbers you're going to use, either like 12 or 0.087, you're just going to have to adjust those yourself, kind of like I did. Because I think it does vary on the platform you're on and the object you're using. So I guess if you're using a basketball and you're on PC VR, Steam VR, or like Valve Index or whatever, that's what I'm on, then these numbers will probably work for you. <laughs> but yeah, there you can see we've got zero gravity ball there. And again, if you do throw it off, it just kind of bounces off as you would expect it to. That's actually very nice zero-g. The person who taught me this method is Silent, the guy I mentioned in my last Rec Room Weekly who made this zero-g ball. He just kind of taught me how to get the velocity of an object without the get object velocity chip or whatever. Here we can wire up the back of this set impulse into this other if chip we made earlier, and we can set this into delta time, and then boom. Wait, I need to stop flying, and then boom. We've got echo, echo combat arena or whatever. Grab the wall, throw the ball, it's all zero G and it's so cool. Again, I would like to point out that this isn't really viable for custom rooms currently because the values are different depending on the platform. If I had like a PSVR player come in right now and touch this ball, the gravity would not be zero gravity. Oh yeah, also if you lag, then the zero G stops working and you just fall until it cuts back in because it's using your local player there for the, the the trigger button or whatever. So I know this was kind of different. I just wanted to make it anyways. I've gone on for way too long at this point. I hope it helped you. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. You know, if you enjoyed it, there's a subscribe button right there, but, you know, no pressure. Also, I think there's a video you'll enjoy right here, so click on that if you'd like to, and that's about it. See you next time.